to our third episode in this series. If you've just joined us, this is a video series where we invite you to join us as we progress along the entire creation process, from conception to the production of a tabletop game. Now, the game we are developing is a small card-based game designed to fit in the universe of our latest big box release, Solar 175. In this episode, we are going to talk about two hugely important aspects of game design, creating prototypes and failure. Last episode, we spoke about the theme we initially chose to base our small card-based game around. Now, after exploring the idea of a Celestial Rebellion-based card game, we moved on to another area of the Solar 175 universe, one which we felt wasn't explored much in the Solar 175 big box game, and that was the Shinjabra Street Race. Shinjabra is a central district of Urushi City, and every summer the area is home to a vast series of street races from a fantastical and bizarre variety of futuristic vehicles. Now we thought we could use this as the focal part of our card game with some racing and wagering elements. The initial idea was this, players would each buy cars to race and hire racers to race them. They would use the cars to speed up their own races and sabotage others. While you could win money through your own vehicles, you could also play face down cards to, to deliberately throw races and bet big on your opponents to win, adding in a bluffing and deduction element. The game itself would be a series of races and ultimately the winning player could be the one with the most credits. To create this game, we followed our usual procedure for early game design. We started with discussing and noting down all our ideas, thinking through what would work and what wouldn't, and playtesting imaginary prototypes in our mind. Then, as soon as possible, we built our own prototype, and it looked like this. As you can see, this is not a particularly beautiful creation. It is, in fact, a complete eyesore. There is no art, no graphic design, no iconography. We haven't even cut things out very neatly. Now, is this just because we are a bit lazy? Well, maybe, but not just that. Our excuse is that when prototyping, you initially want to do it as fast as possible. And the reason for this haste was actually demonstrated very clearly by this game. Now, the first several games were essentially unplayable, but after a little while, a real game did start to emerge, and possibly even a good one. The problem was, it was not at all the game we set out to create. In the process of ironing out the issues from prototype to prototype and seeing Shinjabra slowly take form, it became clear to us that this was simply not going to be a small card game. It wanted to be something quite different indeed. We had set out to create a small gateway game to accompany our big box Solar 175, but Shinjabra was fast becoming very large and very complex. There were hidden roles, dozens of cards, and a worryingly large amount of tokens needed. It was becoming a fun game, but it was not becoming what we wanted it to be. So ultimately and reluctantly, we decided to shelve Shinjabra for now. But this is not all bad news. I think that this failure exemplifies an important lesson about early game design. It should be done very quickly. It is certainly always tempting to put a bit more effort into prototypes, to find some art or create some unique icons, maybe to even buy some interesting pieces from the game crafter. Whilst there is certainly a time in game development for a fancy prototype, the beginning of a game's life is not it. With all of new ideas, there is a huge chance that the idea will fail, and the important thing therefore is to approach that idea with a fail fast mentality. Failing faster is the philosophy that when building something new, ideas should be tested as quickly and thoroughly as possible. Dashen Wang of Northwestern University led an interesting study looking at this concept and found that the ability to fail and start again quickly was a crucial skill for everyone from entrepreneurs to researchers. Each failure is a huge opportunity to learn and you should aim to gain these lessons as quickly as humanly possible. So Shinjabra may still be a great game one day, but for our current purposes, it was a failure. And as hard as it is to start again, it was the right thing to do. Writers are very familiar with this idea, often giving advice to kill your darlings. 
to be willing to edit out even your favourite ideas if they ultimately do not add to the whole story. This element of design is something that we will discuss further when we talk about feature creep. What does this all tell us about prototyping then? Well, these are our top four tips for creating early prototypes and failing faster. Number one, start straight away. As soon as you have your idea, think about how to get something remotely playable onto that table as fast as possible. The sooner it is there, the faster you will know whether it could work or not. Number two, don't make your prototype pretty, just make it playable. This is obviously for all the reasons I mentioned before, but also think about this. If you can make a crappy looking game with no art seem fun, then you know that you're onto a winner. Number three, get in front of people. Don't be afraid to show people the game early on. It may be scary, but other people are the best source of information, feedback and inspiration. They will help you make the game better or let you know if you're wasting your time. Number four, make things easy for yourself. The Noun project has thousands of icons you can use quickly if you absolutely need them in your prototype. Use parts from other games in your collection. This can be a great trick to get you playing quickly and can actually even help conjure up ideas. So with Shinjabra shelved for now, what is the next stage for our game? We need a new theme and this one will be the Gonza Index. Now the Gonza Index is the most valuable stock market in the Solar 175 universe. This vast market trades shares in all of the largest space-based corporations and is unique in having its home in the most exclusive postal code of Urushi. Trillions of credits move through the machinations of this system every second, making the gatekeepers of this institution some of the richest and most powerful in human history. At the time of writing, we are well underway in playtesting our new game in this new theme. And so far, things are looking very promising. So in conclusion, it was not easy to start a game, but ultimately it was the right thing to do for the game. And luckily we failed fast enough that not too much time was invested in the process. Have you ever had to discard something you've worked hard on? How did it turn out for you? And what tips would you have for early prototyping and playtesting? Can you think of a way we could have built a small card game based around a street race? Please let us know in the comments as we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And thank you especially to our patrons who help support this channel so we can make regular videos for you. If you like what we're doing on our channel, please like and subscribe to show your support and maybe even check out the exclusive content that we offer to our patrons on the link in the description below. Thanks and see you next time.